First and foremost, I'd like to apologize for the late upload of this video. This video was recorded six days ago, and I never got to uploading it, so I'm uploading it now on Tuesday. And the next one of these videos will be on Friday, so stay tuned for that. Hey guys, my final exams are over, so I'm going to get some food and we're going to celebrate. So to celebrate, because now I have extra time, I decided to get some food. So I got my, uh, I got my Starbucks over here. And I got my subway over here. You may be asking yourself, what kind of subway do I get? Well, buffalo chicken. <coughs> Welcome to your weekly dose of Cherry Tigers. My name is Dennis, and this is Webcam Wednesdays. So first and foremost, I'd like to announce two winners from last week. Um, I skipped a week, so there's going to be two winners for last week and two winners for this week. So we have Xmail Rice who says Webcam Wednesdays, which is um, pretty standard, but I feel like it's as basic as it gets. And I will send him two red cubes for that, so thank you. And also we have Scarlet Tunes who comes in with the Weekly Dose thing, which did inspire my introduction. So I'm going to send you two red cubes for that. So thank you guys so much for leaving your responses in last week's video, last two weeks video and um, yeah there will be a question at the end of this week's video and I hope you guys respond again so more than anything I'm just you know unwinding uh, relaxing on YouTube uh, logging on and actually playing maple because I haven't done that in a while you know like with the new anniversary events and everything that are coming out I'm actually really having fun on maple and probably the most favorite thing that I've done is uh, going shopping in the free market because there's just so much permanent NX I'm really happy about the uh, transparent wand the transparent shield that they sold or that Nexon sold so I'm using those and a whole bunch of other stuff like that you know I'm really having fun with just all the stuff on the free market so on screen I'm just gonna pop up the way my characters look uh, these are not the final looks for them because you know I'm still like really indecisive about what outfits I'm gonna use but I'm really having fun just deciding like oh should I anvil this should I use transparent this and all that kind of stuff and especially with the cash transfer event you know I'm trying to do this on a budget you know cuz I don't want to just by like, oh, here's five transparent earrings, five transparent shoes, five transparent gloves, you know, I don't want to do something like that, you know, so I'm trying to do it as much as possible on a budget, you know, I'm transferring transparent gears back and forth between all my characters and seeing which characters look best with them and which characters can go without them because they're actually pretty expensive. So yeah, it's the whole entire thing is just really fun. And speaking about fun things, this video right now is actually going to be about the top five favorite fun characters that I've played. And this is strictly with um, just gameplay wise. Like, I'm not talking about damage, I'm not talking about any of those kinds of things. You know, like me training a character from level one up, you know, like I had a lot of fun training certain characters. And I just want to talk about that with you guys. So, this doesn't really have much to do with purely damage or purely bossing and all that kind of stuff. It's just like everything all together. Uh, mainly about training and just the skills that the characters have. So a lot of people have asked me about um, like what characters I recommend for them and all that kind of stuff. And you know, d depending on their specifications, a lot of people just ask like for fun characters. You know, they're not that serious of players to where they want to spend like a thousand dollars in the game and become godly or anything like that. So it's just more for casual people. But nonetheless, I do talk about the bossing abilities of the characters, anyways. So coming in at 5th place, we have Dual Blades. And the thing that I really like about Dual Blades is their huge variety of skills. And what that basically means is you have a lot of options to make and a lot of choices. And when you really play the Dual Blade, at first it is kind of confusing and daunting. But of course you do play it and you get one job at a time. You continue progressing with the character. Some of the skills do improve and you get a lot of new skills. So uh, what that basically means is you can mold the character into your own. And that's what I really like because um, you can make your own keyboard cuts Optimization, which means you can play the dual blade how you want to and if you like if your if your friend logs onto your character you look at your keyboard and they just can't play it you know so it's it's basically like a thing where you play it and it's your own kind of thing so that's what I really like about the dual blade um, the dual blade is amazing in bossing and in training and bossing they do have um, Phantom Blow, which has also a hyper skill passive, which gives a lot of defense ignore, which is really, really, really good in bossing. And of course, in training, they have skills such as Blade Fury, which reaches really far. It's a really wide attacking skill, 
And I do like the fact that Blade Fury can attack behind you as well, which is great. Um, the one thing that Dual Blades do lack is a far range attacking skill, however, Dual Blades do make up for that by having a lot of mobility attacking skills, which means attacks that allow you to move and attack at the same time. Uh, they have plenty of those, which is actually really good. And of course, my favorite thing about Dual Blades is they can link their attacks. And Dual Blades, they're already really fast attacking characters, but when you link the attacks, they come even faster. And that's what I really do like. And furthermore, Dual Blades do have really nice passives. Um, they do have a passive which allows them to heal a lot of HP. Um, it does sap the HP off of monsters when you do hit them, and it really does uh, heal you by a lot. And also, when you do, when a monster does attack you and it misses, you get 100% critical for quite a while. So it's really good. And especially as a dual blade with so much avoidability, you will have 100% critical for a very good amount of time. So um, another thing that I do like, it's more of a thing in the past because Nexon changed something and they changed the avoidability percentage. I believe uh, they changed it to 90%. But in the past, Dual Blades had 100% and they were famous for having 100% avoidability to the point where uh, I had friends in the past that used to just go to Lionheart Castle and they would just sit on a chair in Lionheart Castle and AFK for hours. And the monsters would attack them, but they would always miss. So after a few hours, my friends would come back, they would still be sitting on the chair, which means nothing hit them. So Dual Blades had amazing avoidability to 100%, but right now they still do have like 90% avoidability, which is absolutely amazing. Great embossing, conserves a lot of potions. If they do get hit, they can heal themselves. Bossing wise, they're absolutely amazing. They have a lot of uh, mobility attacking skills and um, Dual Blades, great character. Coming in at 4th place we have Hayato, and Hayato is a, uh, basically it's very similar to Dual Blades actually, however they are actually a worse version of Dual Blades. The reason why I picked Hayato as 4th place however is because I had more fun playing them. The thing about Hayatos is they are very 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 difficult to fund, and believe me, I know a very funded Hayato with 18k strength and he barely has 2 mil 2 mil. He, uh, you know, that if you know anything about funding, you know the 18k to get 2 mil to mil is absolutely ridiculous. As a zero, for example, if you have 12k strength, you can get 2 mil to mil. This guy's 18k, so that's the big ass difference. However, Hayatos, they are a very fun character to play. I do recommend this only to more casual people. And Hayato, what I do like about them once again is their massive amount of skills, they have a lot of mobbing abilities. Unfortunately, their bossing abilities do lack. They do have a decent bossing attack, but once again, their bossing abilities are very lacking. The one unique thing about Hayatos that other characters don't have is they have a move that allows them to bind bosses 100% of the time, and that's his Hitori Strike. And if you do go into boss arena, for example, as a Hayato, you can actually bind the boss like 100% of the time. And of course, even in uh, real bossing situations, you can bind certain bosses all the way. However, uh, in realistic, like realistically speaking, if you go into something like Hard Magnus and try to do that, eventually you will die because something will fall on your head. You know, especially with Hitori Strike, where you're just zooming across the screen, something is going to fall on you and kill you. But um, of course, it's more of a casual character thing and I would highly not recommend funding this character. However, if you do want to just train a character, you want the link skill, or you just want to train a character for fun, this is definitely a character that I would recommend. Coming in at third place, we have a character that is a very, very powerful and underrated character. We have the Cannoneer. And the thing I like about Cannoneers personally is their, I mean, I'm sure it's not just personally because everybody likes this about them, is their attack distance. I talked about Dual Blade as a character that didn't really have much attack distance. Now, Cannoneers, on the other hand, have a crazy amount of attack distance, and their attack distance goes off the screen almost and it's just so far how it reaches and when I was training my phantom even I would steal cannoneers uh, cannon bazooka because it would just reach so far it would do so much damage thing about cannoneers is if you have a damage skin such as keyboard warrior or something that's really wide and you use your hyper skill it hits like 15 lines so you're literally like I remember having fun in uh, Hall of Honor back when that was a thing I would go on the bottom row as a cannoneer and there would be someone on the top row I would use my cannon bazooka and there would be so many lines of damage like 
it would totally reach from the middle, like from the bottom row to the top row. The guy training at the top, the damage would reach and cover him, and he would be like, "What the hell are you doing?" So he would always want to switch with me and go and have me go on the top row because I would do so many lines of damage that it would cover his character. So that's just something that's really cool about Cannoneers, and I really like them. They're a really fun character to play. Their bossing attack hits 18 lines theoretically. We don't actually know if it hits 18. I don't know if the hit limit is 15. But nonetheless, hitting 15 lines is pretty damn good. So um, Cannoneers, they're very underrated. If you fund this character, they can be absolutely amazing. Their attack speed is actually quite good. People say they're slow. They're not actually very slow. They're actually um, remarkably um, not that slow at all. So um, very, very, very fun character to play. Lots of lines of damage. And uh, I would recommend this to anybody who wants to play a fun character. Coming in at second place is a character that I was considering playing, but eventually I picked a different character. And this is the Night Lord. Now, I picked the Night Walker, and the Night Walker is not fun at all. I'll just say that for you guys right now. Night Walker is boring as hell. So, this is the Night Lord. And the reason why I'm picking Night Lord as second place is because they are absolutely amazing bossers and amazing at training. If you go to Drill Hall 2 and you see some of the highest level players in the game, you will see a lot of Night Lords. And the reason why Night Lords are so good is because of their Showdown attack. Showdown is an excellent mobbing attack which also has a percentage, I believe it's a 30% extra EXP and a percentage of higher item drop rate which is amazing for both training and bossing as you can get better loots from boss runs and a lot more EXP from training. So um, there is a good reason why I see a lot of high level Night Lords, it's because they're amazing at Drill Hall 2. Their mobbing ability is great, they also have Mark of the Night Lord which uh, throws throwing stars all over the map. If you have a really cool throwing star from the NX, um, if you have an NX throwing star cover from the cash shop for example, like a meteor or something, you'll see just all these throwing stars just flying everywhere, it looks amazing, it's just the coolest thing ever. If you're going to Gullux for example, a Night Lord going to Gullux, their throwing stars can hit the mobs with no problem, so bossing is easy. For Night Lord and um, training is absolutely amazing for Night Lord. It's definitely one of a. It's a very clean character, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's a very clean character. Their hyper skill looks clean. Everything about Night Lords just looks clean, and that's what I like about them. Very simple character design, yet very effective. So coming in at number one is a character that I haven't introduced to YouTube yet. It's actually a character that I am currently maining and I'm working on it now. But, um, you know, I was going to play a Kaiser, you know. Kaiser was going to be my fifth main, but I dropped the Kaiser project and I gave up on the Kaiser because this character is fucking amazing. And that character that I'm talking about is Wild Hunter. And the Wild Hunter, ever since the revamp, they've been amazing. And I know Bandwagon, yeah, I hopped into the Bandwagon too. But the thing about Wild Hunter that I really like, there's just so many things I like about them. And, you know, I had so much fun training the Wild Hunter. And just to highlight how much fun I had, I'm just gonna say, I, I job advanced at level 116, so I was third job at level 116. That's how much fun I had training the night the uh, Wild Hunter. I just had so much fun I couldn't stop training it, and after I had fourth job advanced, it was even more amazing. So the Wild Hunter completely exceeded my expectations. They're completely a fun character to play, and they are absolutely amazing at bossing. Everything about the Wild Hunter, I like about them, you know? So they, they do have a huge variety of skills in terms of just being able to go on the Jaguar and being able to boss while being off the Jaguar. And um, they're great for training. Um, the one thing I do like about Wild Hunters is that when you're training, you can just hold the button down. You don't really have to actually pick up your finger and just like slam onto the button to continue attacking. You can just hold the button down and walk left to right, left to right, left to right while the Jaguar does all the work. And uh, it's really good, especially if you're training for like three hours a day or something, so you don't have like arthritis or anything like that. Because I know some people, um, they do have pain after training for a long time. So Wild Hunter, excellent in training. And bossing, all I have to say is watch that KMS video of the Wild Hunter that solos Chaos Vellum in like 3 minutes and 30 seconds or something. That, that shit is just amazing. It's breathtaking how fast they can boss, you know. You can watch uh, Wild Hunter do any kind of boss. They're absolutely amazing and it's just such a fun character to play, you know. So 
You will see some content about the Wild Hunter sometime in the far future. I'm not going to say it's anytime near. It's going to be in the far future. But yeah, that is my top 5 list. Wild Hunter, absolutely amazing. Very fun character. I would recommend this character to anybody who wants to play casually or anybody who wants to play very competitively. So there you have it guys, that's my list of my top 5 favorite characters to play, very fun list of characters to play. So leave in the comment section below your favorite character to play and why it's your favorite character, you know? It's very important that you leave why. And from those comments, I will pick 2 winners this week for uh, 2 red cubes, and uh, please do also leave your in-game names below in the comment section so I know who to send the red cubes to, and yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you had fun in this week's daily dose of Cherry Tigers, it's kind of a funny name. but. Yeah, I will see you guys next week and have a good day.